Hello everyone, welcome back to Scribble Me Silly Art for Kids. My name is Joanna, my pronouns are she and her, and this is our fourth workshop, and I'm so excited because today, Eli Shaw is joining us, and Eli is a very interesting visual artist, so we have a very fun project. Uh, to work on together. So you are gonna need a few things for this project. Before we chat with Eli, I'm gonna let you know what they are. We've got a couple of different steps. So I'm gonna tell you what you need for step one. For step one, you're gonna need your sheet of watercolor paper. This sheet is a little bit thicker than regular paper to hold the water from the watercolor. If you don't have watercolor paper, you could use construction paper or you could just use some regular printer paper. We're going to need some paintbrushes for this project. We are going to need some crayons. For the first step and you're going to need washable markers so these ones say right on them that they are washable this is going to be our little magic watercolor i know i don't have any paint set out but we are going to use our washable markers as watercolor paints and there's a couple ways that you can do that and we'll talk a little bit about that as we go on and we work through our project together so friends Let's get going. Let's meet our friend, my friend, soon to be your friend, Eli Shaw. Hello, Eli. Hello there. Hey Hi. there, everyone. Hi, welcome to Scribble Me Silly. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm well, thanks. I'm well. So I was just telling everyone uh, that you are a visual artist and I was introducing them uh, to some of the materials that we're going to be using today, which gives them a, a taste of the uh, different type of um, mixed media that you like to use. Before we get too deep in it, I'm wondering, can you, would you be able to share your pronouns with us? Yes, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Um, my pronouns are he and him. Awesome, thank you. And now I'm wondering, uh, can I share a little bit of your artwork with everyone? Happily, absolutely, of course. Okay, fantastic. So coming up on your screen should be a little bit of Eli's art. And now I said that Eli uh, likes to use what's called mixed media. Could you sort of uh, tell us what that means, Eli? So basically, mixed media is uh, when you use more than just one kind of material to make art. Mm -hmm. So it can be, what I use is what I call found material. So that's stuff that I find in magazines, books, any piece of paper I can find laying around the house. Anything junk can be even mixed media or found material, really. I love comic books. I love animals, I love plants, I'm really interested in landscapes and nature. I have a lot of different interests and so whenever I see something pretty much anywhere that catches my eye, I take a little piece out and I add it to my art. So we're gonna start with, it's, like, it's almost like you've got layers happening here, Eli. Yes. Which layer do we start with? It's easy to break things down in itty bitty steps and little tiny small bites. We wouldn't eat a whole pizza in one bite, so we can't make a big artwork all at once, right? And so the best way to approach this is, in my opinion, is to start with the background, because the background sets the tone. And it's also very no pressure, because you, you don't really know exactly what we're gonna make, right? And so the background is really you just exploring that feeling of not knowing and then finding your way as to what feels right for you. Oh. you know, there's a lot of different ways to do a background. It could be color, it could be photos, it could be things that you found and you decide to glue down. Yeah, but today we're gonna do just a bunch of nice colors. Color, we're gonna start with color. So I've chosen some colors for myself that I really like and I've chosen to use crayons because they make a fun effect when we mix them with watercolors. So I've got these crayons Ooh. to start making my marks with and I'm just gonna go for it. Nice, absolutely. And that is, that's the rule of thumb with this kind of art style is just go for it. Okay, what are you, what are you using there? Today I'm going to be using watercolor. Water? So watercolor is basically kind of like a powdery, they call it pigment, and uh, a pigment is basically just a color, and we add water to it, like so. 
Add a bit more water. The pigment basically comes become becomes like a colorful mud. And so you can uh, I have never thought of watercolors as colorful mud before, and I love that. <laughs> I love it! Colorful mud! And the thicker, your mud, the thicker your mud is, the muddier, the, the more saturated your color is, the brighter it will be. Exactly. And oh, just wow. like dirt or sand, the, the more watery your color is, the lighter it will be. So... If you want a very intense, vibrant color, go for a little bit of water and then use your pigment. But if you want that color to fade out a little bit, be a bit more gentle, add some water and it will lighten. I had a teacher that uh, told me when I was in school that if you're ever using watercolor, you should never have to use the color white. Because if you wanted to make pink, you wouldn't add white to red. You would just add water and the red becomes pink. And yeah, definitely explore different ways to hold your brush, explore different ways that you're moving your brush with different colors and combinations of colors. I like to think of myself sometimes when I'm painting as a scientist and all these colors are kind of like chemicals mm -hmm. and I'm being a safe and responsible scientist but nonetheless I'm exploring the colorful reactions that are happening before me and um, you'll never know where you're gonna get so you mix them there's a little bit of artistry in everyone everyone has something to offer through art because it's kind of like speaking your own language in a way and listening to your own, your own gut, which is scary. Yeah. But it's also very exciting, I find. And it's interesting that you, that you say art is scary. Sometimes I'm afraid to start a project because I, oh, I'm yeah. afraid it won't look like what I want it to. But I think once oh. you, once you start, the art becomes something and it's okay if it doesn't look like what you thought it would. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's, um, that's again why I choose this method because I go with that feeling all the time. Um, I'm so scared. I'm, I'm scared right now to make this art, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> and that's why I love doing it because it's kind of like walking through a haunted house in a way. You know you're going to be scared. Well, you're looking forward to it in a way. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So right now, my markers are kind of like my solid piece of watercolor. And I'm going to add water with my paintbrush. And then I'm just going to move the water around a little bit at a time. And I'm going to turn. It's going to, the water's going to pick up the pigment from the markers. And uh, going to turn the marker into paint. And as I do this, I'm not using a whole lot of water because I don't want, you know, I don't, I don't want to flood. Uh, <laughs> and you can always, you can always add more water, but it's harder to take away the water once it's there. Um, so I'm going to choose spots to paint with my, with my water brush. And I haven't added any more yet. It's like a two for one medium, really, because you get markers and you get watercolor paint. Yeah. Oh, that's like really with our mixed media theme. Exactly. We're using marker and we're painting. I love that. I'm going to clean my brush a little bit and go get this purple. Look at these purple bits. Move them around. Ooh, purple sounds great. Let me get some purple too. Purple. Well, maybe we'll take one more moment and then we'll move on to step two, everyone. So take one more moment to finish up your background. Maybe it's not totally finished. Maybe you'll add something in later. And then we're going to move it aside to dry. Lots of fun colors, right? Okay, so we will take these. Find a safe spot for your background to dry. That you the second step. 
is what we call the subject. The subject. Your subject can be anything, anyone, anything that you can see, really, anything you could taste, anything you could smell, anything that you could draw, pretty much. And so the subject can be a person, food, animal, uh, a landscape, any object that's in front of you. It could be your own hand if you want to. The oh, subject is just, subject's the fancy word for something. <laughs> something. So we're going to use, yeah. the materials that we're going to use right now is, a, you can see Eli already has a small piece of paper. I've cut out a small piece of um, scrap paper, of found paper that I've used some old music here. And then we're going to start with a pen. We're going to start drawing with a pen or a pencil um, to, yes. draw our, to draw our subject. I'm gonna do just a crescent moon. I'm not sure if that's showing up okay. Oh, yeah. I can I can see it here, yeah. There we go. And again, the subject can be anything you like at all. Okay, it I'm getting have to be real. I'm getting out my pen. I'm feeling brave now. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Joanna is a brave one. I'm feeling brave. No looking back. I'm gonna trace over my pencil lines. Oh, I'm, I went out. Oh, exactly. Okay. okay, let's see. One of the classic and easiest ways of creating the idea of depth is cross hatching. And cross hatching is something that I learned from comic books, because I love comic books. And so comic books want to pop out at you, they want to show you action and form, they want to show you that it's a tall building or someone has big muscles or someone is in the shadows or something. And so what we do with cross hatching, it is basically, you see how I have a flat moon right now. So it kind of looks like a, kind of looks like a, like a horseshoe sort of. But if we want to make it look round, what we do is we create lines going in one direction now you make those lines go all the way through in one direction. Keep going this way as well. Keep going. Keep going. And then you trick the eye by creating lines going in the opposite direction. So, like that. And is there a reason that you're only doing it on the one side of the moon? You do it on the one side because the way that you trick the brain into seeing death is to create the illusion of light. And that is by showing shadow. The best way to show light and dark is by creating shadows and what we call highlights. And so right now we're creating the shadow of the moon because the light will be coming from over here, you see? And so if the light is coming from this direction, you can even do like a little rays of light coming from over here. This whole side is bright because it's shiny basically. But this side, on the inside of the crescent is dark. And so you cross hatch this one side that shows that it's dark. And then we leave this side uncross hatched to show that it's light. Okay. And that way it looks like it has form or value. We're all superheroes. Yeah. We save each other with art. And that's why art is so important because everyone has a unique story to tell but we're all exactly the same in certain ways and art helps us show each other how similar and different we are at the same time i'm gonna start erasing my pencil now i just hopefully, noticed that i'm gonna do the same i didn't think about that hopefully this start this looks okay but um yeah. we all come from different walks of life and have different experiences 
but we all feel the same emotions. We all want like to sleep, we like to eat, everyone gets hungry, everyone gets sad, everyone is happy sometimes, we all get angry sometimes, and we might get angry at different things or different things that make us happy, but we all laugh. And so art is just showing you, this is what, this is how I laugh. Before we're finished with our subject, yes. maybe, do you like to add a little color? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yes, I love color. Just okay. like our backgrounds, but this time it's kind of like a, uh, it's, like a it's like you made your own coloring book. You did the outline, got rid of the pencil if you choose to. And now you get to fill it in and do the background okay. of your own little subject. My favorite artist, Bob Ross, says that there's no such thing as mistakes. They're all just happy little accidents. Happy little accidents on a happy little happy. Okay. I'm gonna fill in my... Now if anybody out there is is a little bit faster than Eli or myself, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you the next materials that we are gonna need for the final step. So we've got one more step to sort of pulling this mixed media piece of art together. We've got our background, we've got our subject, we're putting in color, but maybe you've already done, maybe you've finished early and you're finished putting your color on. I want you to find, Eli before was talking about found, things. So I want you to find some things. So you might have some papers, um, some colored papers or colored scrap papers from another piece of art we did. Maybe you did the ice cream cone collage and you had some scraps left over from that. We can use those pieces of scrap paper for this next part. The other thing you could use is you could look around the place wherever you are, look for things that maybe they're not being used anymore. Like Eli suggested a shopping list. Maybe it's a receipt. Maybe it's some recycled paper, like what I was using earlier. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's, this is from a, a flyer. Maybe it's a bit of a flyer. I've also got a uh, sandpaper that I found lying around that I was done with. So find some things, some found things that you can add in. Maybe it's stickers. Oh, that gives me, I gotta find some stickers. Ooh. Maybe you've got some stickers that you wanna add or you didn't know, what am I gonna do with those stickers I've been saving? So I picked up my background okay. and I brought it back and now yeah. it's nice and dry. I can touch it and then the, oh, a little bit of color came, but for the most part, the colors are all set. And even if they aren't completely set, you can work on them again now and add some more touches. But don't worry about it. We're gonna we have that as our background and we're gonna take our subject and pop it on. Huh? You can see how we want it to look. So you can put it on flat the same direction that you painted it. You could turn your subject sideways. You could turn it backwards. You can make your subject upside down. You could flip your background upside down if you like. Maybe that creates a new interesting pattern. You can make it sideways again. It's totally up to you. It's totally your choice. But yeah. Find a spot that you want your background and leave it there a moment. And then we're gonna take all of our found material and we're gonna just kinda put stuff down and see how it looks. Oh, in different okay. spot. Yeah. Layer it up. Just layer it up. So just wherever it feels right to you, you can make a face with the different items. You can just create interesting shapes. What I like to do is, what I say to myself when I'm painting is, I like to frame my subject. Oh. So. Oh, okay. 
So you're putting some of them like under and over. Yeah, exactly. That was kind of neat. And so, and what you can do sometimes even is, what I like to do a lot, is just rip a piece of these kind of materials off if it's too big, or even if you just like that torn effect. I just want to see a little bit more of our pretty background there. this from a fashion magazine, this I got from a typewriter. Oh, that fits nicely behind there. And this part I like a lot because it feels a lot like creating or assembling a puzzle. Uh -huh. You don't know what the final picture is. Ah! Oh my God. <laughs> I think I, I like that. I like that idea with this. I don't, you don't know until you, you don't know until you see it. You know it. Exactly. You keep moving things around until it feels right to you. And so when it feels right, is there any type of special um, uh, ingredient, what material that you use to, do you just use regular glue? Like is a glue stick? Like this one, okay? Oh yes, any kind of glue is, well, it's perfect. It's 100% A-okay. Anything that will make it stick, really. If you, if you want to use tape, you could you could definitely use tape and just tape all the edges or just do a loop of tape and stick on the back. Um, anything that will hold each piece together. So you could sit and arrange for quite some time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this part I find, I find all the different parts fun in different ways because they kind of take different energies, you know, the first part's very spontaneous and adventurous and, you know, there's no looking back, no second guessing, whereas the subject is a little bit more thoughtful and you're taking your time and you're getting the details and then you're coloring it, and so you're either trying to stay in the lines or you're working outside the lines on purpose. And this part is a little bit of both. You're being spontaneous, but you're also being very thoughtful at the same time. And so it's really just listening to your own feelings, which is very important. And I think that's another way that art teaches us a lot because it teaches us to listen to our feelings and what we call, you know, people say listen to your gut. It's a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, we can really trust trust ourselves that we know what this piece is. And when it's right, we know that it's right and we can sort of follow that instinct, that artistic instinct. Exactly, precisely. And so um, I think I'm Eli, getting... look at what we've created. We've, you know, we've really- uh, oh, beautiful made something made some things here that's so that's so lovely joanna i want to give joanna a nice round of applause you did a great job as a matter of fact give yourselves all a round of applause for <laughs> what you've created so far i love that we should definitely celebrate these wonderful pieces of art and if you are wanting i mean I would love to see everyone's art, just like you're able to see um, ours here. If you want to share your art with us, you can uh, get a get an adult to go on to Instagram. You can take a picture together, choose the picture that you like of your art, go on to Instagram and share it with the hashtag get silly. Um, and then everyone will be able to see it. You can search get silly and see each other's art too. I would love that. I'd just love to share art with everyone. Eli, thank you so much for coming and talking with us about um, mixed media, media art. It's been an absolute pleasure. I can't wait to see everyone's art. I'm sure it's fantastic. And remember, it's art. It's supposed to be fun. There's no rules. So express yourselves, you know, share, and I'll see y'all next time. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Eli. Uh, hopefully everyone will see you again sometime soon at Scribble Me Silly Art for Kids. Bye.